All right, hello everyone. Uh, this was a little bit of an unplanned stream, um, because I didn't, I couldn't decide if I wanted to just stream this or if I wanted to do a bunch of little videos, break them up, do some editing, but I really don't have the time for that, unfortunately. Um, so I decided instead, um, to do a little stream, kind of showcasing some of the mods, um, tips and tricks you may want to, uh, want to know before you start building your base or anything like that inside the Raidcast, uh, server. Uh, since I believe that will be going live not too long from now. So, while I wait for my shaders to disable, because not everybody will be having access to these when they are playing, um... The first thing I want to note is when you are selecting your place to live that you want to pick an area um, with uh, a chunk in mind, a specific chunk in mind. And the reason why I bring this up um, is because one of the mods that is going to be very useful for everyone is going is Tom's Simple Storage. Now. So what you're going to want to do to know where you're at or what chunk you're in, you're going to want to hit the F3 key on your keyboard and the G key. And what these two keys will do when you hit them together will show you your chunk borders. Um, so this is the edge of your chunk. Chunks are 16 by 16 blocks in each direction. And the reason why this is important is with Tom's simple storage, um, it you have these inventory connectors. We'll go with the crafting terminal, uh, these cables, and the advanced wireless terminal. And I think that's all we really need off the bat. We might need the connector. I think we need the connector. Okay. Um, do not use this item, this open crate. Um, there has been some bugs with the one server I play on um, for a different mod pack where this this item is not working as intended it, as it says it creates item entities and basically it was creating thousands of thousands upon thousands and thousands of items um, on the ground in the game and causing a lot of lag so please do not use the the crates now the first important part of the Tom simple storage is the inventory connector this this item in particular will connect your chests together so let's say I have a setup like this because I'm just starting out uh, whoops so this inventory connector is connecting all of these chests together uh, let's grab some planks and I can, and maybe some dirt. So we'll put some dirt in here, some planks in here. Now, this is just the connector. It's not going to show you anything that's in these chests that are connected because they're touching each other. What you're going to need to do is set up a terminal. There's two different ones. There's the storage terminal, which will just show you what's in your storage. And then there's the crafting terminal which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's go, I don't, oh, that's not gonna work the way I want to. So, as you can see, inventory connector is telling you how many slots you have free if you right click on it. But we need to put a cable on here. The, oop, that's facing the wrong way. We gotta do it, I think this way. No, it doesn't want to cooperate. So what we're going to need to do first is get our crafting terminal to sit on the side, break it, and connect. Mm. So the, this inventory cable is how you can connect your inventory system, your simple storage system, to one of these terminals. Uh, I believe you have to use the cable connector in order for the terminal to register that it's connected to this system. So if I right click on this crafting terminal, I can see what's in my inventory, my storage system. 
in the added bonus is it has a crafting table down here. And what this is good for is, like, if I wanted to make a crafting table out of my crafting terminal, you can search the item you want to make, click on it in JEI, which is this panel over here, and then you can hit this little plus icon and it'll automatically move the items that you need from this inventory in your storage system so that you can craft the item you're looking for. Uh, there are these different panels on the side here where you can sort by item amount, name, um, to make things finally easier. This is a search bar up at the top and uh, this I think just reverses the sort order. Um, but the big one here is if you don't want it pulling stuff from your inventory when crafting, you'll tell you'll toggle this so that it doesn't pull the missing items from your inventory to craft the item you're trying to craft. Now, this storage system also has these lovely items here. Uh, a wireless terminal and the advanced wireless terminal. The wireless terminal, you'll right uh, shift right click, I think. No, hang on. Maybe it's the inventory system. No. I, I've never actually used this one. Uh, extend your reach for the terminal. It's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to get it to connect to the system. And I'm having an issue with that. Maybe I have to... Game mode survival. Shift right click. No. Huh. Maybe this one doesn't work. <laughs> but I know with the advanced wireless terminal, you have to shift right click it to bind it to the terminal. Now, the advanced wireless terminal... There it goes. Now it says it's bound. Um, I can f move away. Let me go back into creative here. Fly off to a certain extent and access my storage system from anywhere. However, this does have some limitations in the overworld. Um, and it doesn't extend to when you are doing dimensional travel. So in order... Whoops, I didn't mean to get rid of the terminal... Uh, to extend the barrier, the crafting terminal needs to be at least within eight blocks from a lovely beacon. So let's create a beacon here. So beacon, and we'll do some iron blocks because we just need something simple. So a level one beacon is a 3x3 three three of either iron, gold, emerald, diamond blocks. Slap your beacon in the middle. Make sure your beacon can see the sky or else your beacon will not activate. And like I said, it has to be within eight blocks of the crafting terminal, this block in particular. If you're uncertain if the system you are trying to get set up for storage anywhere, Quark has added a lovely item called the Abacus. And how this Abacus works is you right click the block and then you can use it to measure how far away your block is. And this works even at angles. So like the corner of this chest is nine blocks away from this point. And the beacon is three blocks away from that. So this is really handy when coming to uh, working on your builds on the server um, let me see uh, I believe it's pretty simple to craft it's just some spruce plank uh, some planks two sticks and an iron and you have yourself an abacus for measuring now the level one beacon and the storage system all have to be within the same chunk just like it has to be eight blocks away and the reason being is on the server, you can only claim one chunk. And, uh, no, not claim. You can claim nine chunks. Sorry, I said that wrong. You can't, however, um, for, uh, force load multiple chunks. You can only force load one chunk, which is why this is very important. 
So, they have to be in the same chunk because if a beacon is not, the beacon will unload if you're too far away and your storage system will be left loaded and it won't see the beacon and therefore it won't let you access your terminal. Just like any of your chests, if they're outside the chunk that are part of your storage system, if they're outside, the storage system will not know that those chunks are there. I mean, that those chests are there because the chunk is no longer loaded. Um, so, so we can go out pretty far from that beacon now. Let's see, terminal out of range. The chunk unloaded uh, data-wise. Hang on. FTB chunks. Well, I guess it's a good point to, or good time to bring up how to claim your chunks. So, once you find where you want to land, or live, not land, uh, you're going to open up your inventory. And in the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see some icons. Some of these icons you might not see on the server. Uh, I know the team should be there, the trash can, and FTB chunks should be there. If you click on the little map for FTB chunks, it's going to show you a map of the area. When you want to actually claim your chunks, you're going to click on claimed chunks. And this is going to open another map showing you the chunks. To claim, you're just going to left click and you can drag and release. And then it'll draw wherever you want to claim that becomes claimed. On the server, mm. you're limited to nine chunks to claim. And like I said, one to force load. To unclaim, just right click. Press and hold right click and draw what you want to unclaim from your territory. For force loading the chunk that you want to have your storage system in, you're going to shift left click. And this will force load the chunk that you have your storage system saved into. And I think I just accidentally claimed another chunk. It doesn't matter though. So, beacon has to be here, server ha uh, terminal has to be here, etc. With a level one beacon and making sure you have everything else set up to these parameters, you can access your inventory uh, storage system, not your inventory, your storage system from anywhere in the overworld. So we are so far away that you know for certain now you can't even see the storage system. But if I right click on this advanced terminal, that should not be happening. Did something change? Let's see. Oh, that's weird. What is going on? That's within the barrier. Uh-oh. This is unexpected. That's within three blocks. Let's see. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Or maybe it was the specific server settings and I'm wrong, but I thought that was uniform to the pack or the mod itself. So let's real quick. It's supposed to be a level one should let you access your, your system from anywhere. There's also this paint kit um, so that you can paint your framed, the framed cable so it can blend in with your builds. Um, rad, rad, badger, rad, rad, da, 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 da. One inventory connector, which we do have. Huh. That's unexpected and kind of annoying uh might have to take a look at the mod info um on that later but that's what even some of the videos i have seen on tom simple storage have said on how the mod is supposed to work so that's going to take some um research but theoretically not theoretically, it's supposed to. You you can travel anywhere in the overworld um, 
and access your inventory with the advanced wireless terminal. Run, 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 run. Um, like I said, I don't know if there was some config settings that we might need to adjust or anything, but that's how the mod is supposed to work. Um, so I'll have to review with Gil on that before we actually uh, open up the server to everyone. Uh, well, I'm glad I was doing this video in order to find this out now as well. Um, but the other thing is, because uh, of how frustrating it is to deal with the beacons, the beacon also um, needs to be in the chunk. And a level 4 beacon, which is going to be too big for a super flat, a level 4 beacon is supposed to let you be able to access your inventory run, 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 from run. any dimension. Anywhere in the overworld, anywhere in the dimension, uh, any dimension you're in. Um, but given that there's some sort of issue going on here, I'll have to look into it further. But it's supposed to let you access it, um anywhere run, run, so we made a bigger one let's see i can still access it terminal out of range yeah so i'll have to look into that i'll have to play with that uh later well that's that's the basics for claiming uh and tom's simple storage uh, I'll have to look into why this isn't working. I remember having some difficulty getting it set up on the um, other mod pack server I play on. So, but a level four, which would have one more row out, um, down here <laughs> and around, uh, that that should be letting you access your inventory from anywhere. I think maybe I messed something up here so I would have to double check how I built it on the other uh, place I play on and also just the mod configs in general. Um, moving on from Tom Simple Storage there are uh, a bunch of other mods available in the Raidcast uh, Pixelmon server. Uh, we have Pam's Harvest Craft um, which is a large agricultural based mod. It's all about adding a bunch of different foods to eat, to farm, and to cook with. Um, the other important mod in this, uh, when it comes to the cooking, is cooking for blockheads. And this is a really great mod for just kind of like storage and cooking everything because it's it's a uniform way of accessing your um your stuff your I need some well, planks here sorry uh for all the different like any if you have multiple different cooking mods this is a great way to kind of get some uniformity and also just, you know, for storage for um, all the food in those mods. Uh, and how you connect it is actually with these kitchen floor floor uh, tiles. Uh, and again, if you need to know the recipes, the JEI can help you find out the recipes. Um, Except black concrete, if you try to get the recipe for that, you're going to have to actually go to JEI over here and look for the concrete powder recipe uh, in order to actually get the recipe for the floors instead of trying to use coal and quartz. Uh, so let's create ourselves a little kitchen here. So we got ourselves a little kitchen. And then there's like a fruit basket you can put on here, a spice rack for storing like different spices. There's a toaster for just toasting some bread and a tool rack, uh, which we'll put here. Uh, there's more. There's also cow in a jar, but given that the vanilla mobs are not spawning, um, I'm not certain how we're going to be able to allow people to get access to cow in a jar. Um, milk jar, I believe you have to fill it up is the problem with that one is you actually have to like fill it up and you can take the milk out. Um, so that will be 
that's something I'll have to discuss with uh, Gil on. There's this cutting board. It's mostly for decoration. <laughs> um, and let's actually extend another counter out. The counters are storage drawers. You can store stuff inside them. The sink here is an infinite water source, but it'll only take up one block. The oven works just like a furnace, but it also has some integration, especially in this case, with Pam's Harvest Craft cooking stuff, uh, which we'll get to in a moment. This cooking table can help you see what you can make. So, like, we can make salt if we had the pot in our storage over our cooking for blockheads area over here but we can also just get ourselves a ton of fresh water because we have the sink connected um to connect all the items together the kitchen floor also helps so if you put down the kitchen floor underneath everything here what this particular mod does is these kitchen floor tiles will also connect let's say we put a fridge here and in the fridge we put some ham not ham uh pork <laughs> yeah some raw pork so let's put a pork chop in here we go to the store the cooking thing here the fridge even though it's not connected to everything over here are within a certain number of blocks the fridge is on this tile, so the fridge is connected to this cooking system, basically. So I can then try to cook this pork chop. It'll put it in the oven. You will have to fuel it, and this is where your fuel will go, and it'll cook the food you're trying to cook from this station. Um, and then we can also have cabinets up here in the... Oh, that's just so things look nice still. Um, so if I boot this, we can put, not another hanging one, but a kitchen cabinet. So you can also have upper levels of storage to build yourself a nice little kitchen. I'll put the milk jar here. Let's grab some milk. And let's see. Yeah, it's, it's, you just fill it. Um, whereas the cow in a jar will actually passively generate you milk. So, we'll have to look into seeing how you guys can get access to that. Um, so, there's these little upgrades as well for the Cooking for Blockheads uh, that can be used on the different um, things. So, the heating unit, unit um, isn't really relevant in this uh, pack. Because we're not using any of the uh, power generating mods. But if we did, you can have your oven use energy instead of relying on fuel. Uh, like coal and charcoal. The fridge has this ice unit. Which you can provide snow and ice to any recipes that you're using that might use them. Uh, I believe there's like ice cream that will require ice or snow. So the fridge will be able to passively provide them to your cooking recipes when you're cooking. The preservation chamber just prevents um, the last item slot in your fridge from getting used up. So it won't, fi it won't really... Uh, fully fill um, and it's got some pretty decent storage so that's the cooking for blockheads uh, let's get to I think this is just the crops for Pam's food extended I don't think adds new tools I think it's just a lot of new food and as you can see there is a lot of food a lot okay here we go the food core so this is what's really really important is the food core part of Pam's Harvest Craft. There's all these additional tools to use when cooking food from the uh, stuff in Pam's Harvest Craft. Uh, which is where you can store these. The cutting board, I don't know, can be placed in the world. We might not use the Cooking for Blockheads version and use the Pam's Harvest Craft version. Though I think it just calls it... Eh. 
Um, we'll, we'll worry about that. Uh, there's a bakeware, there's a juicer, there's a grinder, a mixing bowl, a pot, a roller, a saucepan, and a skillet. Uh, the bakeware, the pot, the saucepan, and the skillet can all be just put into the oven if you want, or you can store them up here. Um, they can also, yes, be stored on top of the stove. If I can get this to... Maybe I put it in the wrong slot. I put the skillet in the wrong slot, that's why. Um, <laughs> it's a little finicky. Uh, so the skillet would go there. The sauce... No, the saucepan goes there. The skillet, I think, goes... The skillet goes somewhere. I'll just stick it here. Ta-da! Uh, the pot and the bakeware. Whoops. So you can just store them in here, but I think I accidentally overwrote the pot. Um, they are just used in the crafting menu of stuff, like the pot is used in the crafting grid. They're not like actual items you interact with. There are some mods, however, that do that. We just don't have them available. Um, the spice rack is like if you create salt from Pam's Harvest Craft. Uh, salt you can like store your spices in here as well and you can store your fruit in here um, so that's pretty much it for Pam's Harvest Craft and cooking for blockheads and my all-time favorite mod that we are using even though it doesn't work with um, pixel wand too well is sophisticated backpacks so once you get your backpack made uh, the recipe is four leather, a chest, and two, uh, four string. Um, what's cool about these is you can place them in the overworld and access the inventories. Or you can wear them on your back. Uh, depending on your keybinds, uh, since journey map is going to be involved, you're probably going to have to change your keybinds around. Um, you can do that by going to options, controls, and then your keybinds. And then you'll just look for your conflicting keys and then change things around. Um, don't be like ill and do it before you know what mods you actually need to change your keybinds for. Um, so uh, when you're wearing your backpack, you can hit B and access the inventory. And you can do this anywhere. The backpack also has little upgrades. Or not little upgrades, but upgrades to the size so the iron backpack you take your backpack surround it with iron ingots and that will give you uh i think this is about a doubles chest worth of storage uh that you can just carry around with you the gold backpack follows the same pattern uh diamond ingots all or uh, not diamond gold ingots all around the iron backpack will get you the gold backpack which is really big uh it's like three chests worth i believe Diamond does the same thing. Diamonds all around your gold backpack will get you the diamond backpack, which is a nice, chunky, big bit of storage. And then lastly, the netherite backpack. To get the netherite backpack, whoops, um, you have to get netherite. And you use a smithing table to put your diamond backpack in the netherite into the table to get your netherite backpack. And I believe the biggest upgrade, I think there is a little more space in the netherite backpack, but these storage, uh, not storage, but these little upgrades. So sophisticated storage, uh, not storage, sophisticated backpacks has these little upgrades you can put into your backpack. Uh, the first being like a pickup upgrade so that when you're mining, instead of having to stop and pick up every single uh, block that you break, this will automatically mag uh, pick it up. Uh, this will actually magnet the items into your backpack. So this is actually better than the pickup. I think the pickup is more like dealing with weird storage system stuff that we're not really going to need to get into our storage moving. Um, there's filter upgrades so you can filter what comes in or out of your backpack. Uh, the feeding upgrade will auto feed you with food from your backpack. So be careful what you put in there because some food, some items like spider eyes will be eaten if they're in your backpack and uh, are in the first, the slot before the 
uh, your main food source. So you kind of want to keep an eye on that or else you'll find yourself eating spider eyes. <laughs> Um, the compacting upgrade, I'm going to say do not use this. The reason being is I believe, well, I don't think we have any compressed variants of items, but um, it can run into some problems, so do not use the compacting upgrade. Um, because if something happens, given my skill and knowledge on server maintenance and stuff, I will not be able to recover your items and I do not wish to care, uh, delete your character uh, data. So just don't use the compacting upgrades. Um, the void I, void upgrade, if your backpack's full or like if you don't want bajillion cobble, you can do a filter to void those items right away if they enter your backpack so they're not taking up excessive amounts of space. Not that I really foresee that being an issue in this mod pack because, again, there's not, like, a whole lot of additional items and stuff to collect. Um, restock. Uh, you can easily just restock your backpack with items that you have in it already from your storage system. The deposit upgrade is just auto-depositing your items into your storage system from the backpack. Um... And refill upgrade will just keep refilling a stack. Um, Inception, use this with caution. I haven't really played with it much, um, but it allows you to put a backpack in a backpack, which I believe historically for Minecraft, storage within storage can cause issues, especially if you put too much storage inside storage. So don't Inception a backpack that has Inception and then Inception another backpack and, you know, so on down the line. Because you can break it. You can break your character data. Um, so don't do that. Uh, the Everlasting Upgrade. Uh, this just means if you do happen to die, uh, the backpack won't disappear or despawn or fall into the void. However, that's not going to be possible because we have keep inventory on on the server because of an unfortunate accident involving me before we did the revamp. Uh, smelting upgrade will allow you to be able to smelt items in uh, your backpack. So if you have a backpack, let's put it inside my backpack here. And let's get some coal and some raw iron. So with the smelting upgrade, whoopsies. Um, you can, you'll get a tab over here. And as you can see, the furnace automatically took the coal to feed the smelter. And I can put this into the smelt and it will smelt for me. And you can also have it set to auto smelt when specific items come into your inventory. Uh, so if I were to grab more uh, raw iron here, iron ore, whoops, uh, I can say you. auto smelt this, put it in my bag, tell it to match the item. Nope. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know how this part works. I never messed with it. There it goes, there it goes. Okay. Uh, maybe I wasn't supposed to keep the item Thank there. You. Either way, it will start smelting your items for you. Smoking will allow you to smoke food. Um, if you wish, uh, blasting will do... It, it's just the equivalent of the auto smelting um, or the smelting upgrade. This is the auto smelt version. Uh, there's also the crafting upgrade, which is a really good one as well, because then you have a crafting table with you on the go, especially since, for some reason, I haven't figured out what's going on with Tom Simple Storage to let you access that anywhere. Uh, the stone cutter, you can access the stone cutter in your backpack. This is very, very useful, the stack tier upgrades. So normally, you only can have store a stack of 64 before it takes up another slot in your backpack. The stacking upgrade will double it, and then it goes up and up and up, <laughs> all the way up to the netherite tier. 
So in some cases, you may even be able to just carry your entire inventory or your storage stuff with you and not even rely on Tom's simple storage. It just depends on the kind of player you are and what's going to work best for you. Uh, another bonus is the juke jukebox upgrade. You can put this into your backpack and it'll let you play your music discs while you're running around in the world. Um, there's the tool swapper. Uh, I like this one. It'll automatically swap. Like if you're mining stone and you come across dirt and you have a shovel, it'll automatically switch to your shovel. So you're not using the wrong tool on the wrong block. Um, uh, the tank upgrade, this will allow you to store uh, fluids. You. So you can like store water with you. You can store lava. Um, most, I believe most of the time it's just used with the uh, experience storage, uh, which you'll need a pump, specifically the experience pump. And then you can store your levels into the backpack and I believe the benefit with that is then you can use mending to mend your specific tools instead of the randomness that mending actually works um, or how mending actually works in Minecraft. Um, so that involves that uh, to stick with the more of the storage stuff. There's the iron chest mod, which um, is just a way to condense down your storage size um, or storage systems a fair bit um, so an iron chest is basically a double chest but it's only taking up one block a gold chest is a lot of storage then there's the diamond chest which is a ton of storage and the crystal version which just shows you the items that you have in the chest so you can see what's stored. But aside from that, they're pretty much the same size as the diamond chest. Um, I don't recommend using the crystal chests on the server. Uh, because I believe they might create lag. Uh, but these are good for just compacting your storage down. So that you're not with like a huge wall of chests trying to keep everything stored. Um, so that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, so mystical agriculture, this is agritions. Um, this is just new stuff to it, but this is overall what we're looking for. So the mystical agriculture is a very involved process compared to what it used to be way back in the early days of mystical agriculture. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I am still a little rusty on mystical agriculture myself, but what it does is it allows you to, uh, we can turn off the chunk borders now, um, create seeds to grow uh, essence of the resources in the game. Uh, I don't, there isn't a pixel mod compatibility. This is just more for vanilla resources. Um, so what you're going to need first is, of course, uh, prosperity or will give you prosperity shards. You're going to need these and you're going to need infernium, inferium essence, which you can get from killing, uh, from not killing, but beating up Pokemon. You can also mine it in the overworld as well. Um, those are the big things you'll need in order to really get started with this mod. Um, you also need to create an infusion altar and when you place this block down, as you saw while I was talking, it showed me a phantom image of these uh, pedestals. You need, I believe it's eight pedestals around the altar and uh, a button or a lever because it activates with a redstone signal. So you have to be able to provide a redstone signal to this. And how this works is quite 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 interesting so one of the first things you can make with the mystical agriculture is you can make yourself some inferium seeds and how you do that is we need a crafting table uh, let's just get a crafting table Really? Okay. 
crafting table. You take a seed and you'll surround it with Inferium Essence, like so, to get your Inferium Seeds. And then when you plant these, they'll grow and generate you more Inferium Essence. Uh, there's a, a ritual that you'll need to do after you start getting some Inferium Essence. Let's say we want to get... Oh, look, actually, we might be able to use <clears throat> use it for automating some other stuff tier one seeds so tier one seeds it, it will tell you when you hover run, over run, the item run, 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 are run. pretty easy to get in the beginning so stone in order to get yourself some stone seeds you're going to need to create a prosperity seed base and the prosperity seed base is the pros the wheat seeds with four prosperity shards surrounding it and then as you saw here whoops uh, i need to go to the stone seeds hang on where are the seeds uh and the infusion crafting to create the other stone the the other resources and such you'll need to look at what you want them to create so we want to create some stone seeds you'll need these items and these items we got stone and four inferium will need to go into the respective places on the pedestals <coughs> i think we can just use stone stone so i think it was inferium here inferium here uh it was inferium here here and then stone I might be wrong <laughs> hopefully I'm not too terribly wrong on where that's supposed to go you put in your seed base you hit the button and it will start a process to create your stone seed and then there's these ingots where you can create a pretty awesome armor set tool set and such it's a very involved process um, and you can just use the JI to your advantage into figuring out what you need in order to create these things. But a uh, big thing is if you want to, Inferium Farland is really, really useful. Um, as you go up the tiers, you can also create farmland that will then grow your resources faster for you. Um, so it's very useful for that. And as you can see, uh, there's uh, also furnaces where you can cook your stuff faster. Uh, and then there's the seed repro reprocessors. When you're harvesting your crops, uh, your mystical agriculture crops, you are likely to get uh, some seeds. Uh, then you can put them in here. Uh, mostly the inferium, the prudentium, tertium, imper imperium. And then you can put them in the reprocessor to break them down and give you um, the the essences. Uh, the soul extractor is if you want to do uh, stuff involving the mobs to fill soul jars so you can get like cow essence and sheep essence. You'll have to basically go into the nether in order to start the process looking for solium. It's a very involved mod. Uh, it's got pretty steady progression, if you ask me, through the mod, even though it can be pretty OP. Um, and just like the, the Paxels are like your all-in-one tool, it's your pick, your axe, etc. Ooh, I need some water. So mystical agri agriculture is just how we can get lots of, oh, even silicons in here. I don't know if it'll work with Pixelmon, but... Um, it's just ways of getting stuff like coal and stuff passively without having to constantly go out and mine. Um, uh, whew. So you can just grow stuff um, and then focus on c completing your Pokédex uh, or training your Pokémon or breeding your Pokémon in Pixelmon. Uh, Chipped is a decorative mod. 
it is all about creating decorative blocks. It's kind of like a more interesting slash involved version of Chisel. Um, and I really like it because it gives you so many different options to the vanilla blocks for, you know, base building. Um, and the workbenches are really cute to build around. Uh, so let me show you, like, the botanist workbench, it's like a little flower station, glass blower, the carpenter's table, a loom, mason's table, the alchemy bench, and the um, machinist's, mechanist's workbench. So, like, if you want to do specific cute glass different uh or change up your glass you would put your glass into the glass blower um stuff for the, i think it's like the trees and stuff would go into carpentry the mason's table will be your stone um and etc like i think you can put like redstone stuff in here um wool can go in there for different stuff so it, it's really just an aesthetic mod for changing up like, as you can see, this huge list of options. So next tab, we have Looter. Looter is just the instance looting. But here's a big one. Botany Pots. Botany Pots are awesome. So the base one will just let you grow stuff in the pot. Um, let me do this. And then we'll put a hopper here. The hopper botany pots, though, are great for passive farming. You can put dirt, sand, um, all sorts of stuff into your pot. Uh, if it's if it's dirt, it'll automatically put it into farmland. Ah, the seed, this, ah. So you're going to have to actually have farmland for the uh, mystical agriculture stuff. It won't let me actually put them in there. But let's say we want to grow... Uh, we love grapefruit. So we can put a grapefruit sapling in the pot, our carrots, our potatoes, our wheat, or whatever in the pot, and it will automatically grow the, the, uh, the, the produce or that you want to grow. And the hopper botany pot will just automatically collect it and drop it into the chest. Whereas if you put it in this one, when it reaches the full state, you have to manually break it in order to get the resources from it. Uh, this isn't the best way for uh, getting uh, your fruits and stuff, but it's an alternative method than having to manually farm everything. Um, though it's important to note that mystical agriculture is not compatible with uh, the botany pots. The Botany Pots mod also has tiers. And the tiers are useful because what the tiers will do is they will speed up the growth, uh, the tick growth for said plant. See, look how fast that is growing compared to this one. Um, I believe uh, this is just a variant where you have to manually break, but they also have a, uh, a hopper variant. And then the, the recipe is super expensive for this tier, but it's like the highest tier. But this is just a way for our passive farming. Okay, and then of course we have all your base Pixelmon stuff. And then we have iron furnaces, which I realize is actually kind of a bit of an unnecessary mod to have, thanks to Mystical Agriculture. But if you want to keep your Mystical Agriculture stuff separate, that's fine. So, it, it works just like the iron chests, except it goes up to netherite, in this case. Netherite will instantly smelt a full stack of 64 items for you. There's also stuff for... Augmenting, not that it's really as necessary once you hit the netherite. Um, and the rainbow furnace is really crazy. 
and really expensive to make. It's the tier above netherite. <laughs> furnace spookulator? Right click on furnace to spookalize. Three spooky, five me. <laughs> um, and there's, there's some other stuff. Uh, but overall, it's just meant to like speed up the smelting process so you're not waiting forever for your stuff to smelt. Um, it's, it's just an alternative. Uh, mystical Agriculture all kind of offers something similar. Um, and then there's, of course, Biomes You Go, which just adds a bunch of um, new blocks and stuff and new biomes in the pack. Um, let's see. I believe we're just missing on some of the Quark stuff because Quark puts all their stuff into the vanilla tabs instead of their own separate tabs. Same with supplementaries. Supplementaries, you have hanging signs you can put up now, little signposts if you want to do like little street signs that's got flags. You can put, uh, create presents, uh, a pedestal, uh, this notice board, a safe, this cage, the jar, will allow you to do stuff. A sack, which is just a terrible bag in my opinion. A blackboard, globe, uh, different light options. Uh, then we've got those bamboo spikes if you want to make traps. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, the cage will allow you to pick up small mobs. Uh, I don't know if it'll work on Pokemon. Let's see, do we have a small... Look, we got a little pup over here. I don't think it will work. Let's see. Yeah, it won't work. So this is pretty useless in this version of the game. The notice board is how you can put up like little notices. Um, it's like a sign alternative. The safe is uh, you get a key, I think, and then this is like a alternative to ender chest storage. Uh... The pedestal just lets you display items. So if you want to make a shop, displaying what you sell, you can use the pedestal for that. The jar, again, is for, like, ga uh, I think, like, grabbing stuff. But what's really nice is the planter. Which is kind of like a, a weaker version of the botany pots. However, you can put flowers, you can put the bear, the sweet berries in it. Um, I'm actually interested, can we do the inferium seeds in it to grow? Yes. So this will, it, it basically acts like farmland without the need to create huge amounts of farmland. And once it finishes growing, you can just right click it and it will harvest it for you and then start uh, growing it again. Um, I don't know if with, like, flowers. Uh, let's, let's go with, like, a corn flower. You can put, you know, your flowers in it. You can put trees in it, too. Um, but I think if we bone meal the flower... No, okay, that's not a thing in this one. So, you, you can put flowers in it. It's just decorative. Um, but most importantly, you can grow your crops if you don't want to worry about having a huge amount of farmland. Um, the globe. It's just a cool interactable item. Gives you coordinates. It's supposed to be a globe of like the Minecraft world. Uh, the blackboard is something you can draw on. Uh, so let's do... Ta-da! So you can make like little signs. Uh, if you're not using a shader, uh, I believe you should be able to uh, you can actually dye it. Um, I just don't know how to do it. Uh, but you should be able to like dye it so you can have like a colorful chalkboard. I just don't know what to do. Uh, how to use it. Um, raked gravel. So that's, that's supplementaries. Another thing is it's got like a little flower box. You can put three flowers in it. A little statue. So a lot of stuff for like decorating. But also kind of useful. 
course, we got all the Pixelmon stuff that gets added. Quark adds the different types of chests. Um, uh, these paper lanterns and paper walls, if you want to build like a Japanese style build, you can do so a lot easier. The lit redstone lamps uh, are just, you know, redstone lamps that don't need a signal in order to turn on. We got the, the, the awesome glass item frames. These are pretty cool. So if you want to display something, an item, but not see the frame, you use the glass item frames. And same with the glowing, it'll make the item glow. These are pretty cool. Uh, it adds these leaf carpets as another little thing for decorating, an iron rod. Um, kind of like the end rod. You can condense down your crops into these sacks. It adds in some different stuff. But this is this is what's really cool. It's these corundrum uh, crystals. Since we have a beacon up and running. Let me grab a block here. Uh, what you can do with these uh, corundrum crystals is you can redirect your beacon beam whoops uh the the item the crystal has to stay on the thing it's supposed to redirect it's supposed to uh time set day turn off the rain No, no, you don't want to work like you're supposed to. Okay, uh, historically it's supposed to redirect the the freaking beam, so you can like point the beam over this way, and it'll it'll do that. And it's supposed to also like change the color of your beacon beam, but it doesn't seem to be working. Um, I'm not sure why. Could be some sort of conflict, maybe. It adds candles, more wall options, these little yeah. stools to sit on, and uh, different color leaves and blossoms and stuff that you can also create little hedges with. Uh, these are the hedges up here. Uh, I don't think there's much in terms of like new redstone items getting added. Oh, there's this inductor randomizer and like a shoot. But I'm not a big redstone person, so I haven't really done anything with those. Um, miscellaneous. Let's see, we got all the Pixelmon stuff. This is stu the flax for growing string, basically. And it was supplementaries, I think. Uh oh. <coughs> oh, we crashed! Oh, what? Oh no, I don't know what did that. <laughs> Um, unexpected. Uh, let's get back into the game now. This is going to take forever and a day. Game crash. Uh, not enough data. Uh oh. Graphics driver conflicts? Oh. Oh, I have an idea. God damn you, Windows 10. Stop messing with my graphics driver. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I just can't believe it. Alright. Well. We were almost done anyway. Uh, I was really hoping it wouldn't take an hour long, but I encountered some issues. And I'm going to have to dig into a little deeper and maybe talk to Gil about them. Um, and also, this is like a mini debut for me. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, yeah, mini debut. I am looking at getting a 2D uh, image made at some point with uh, more features that I want it to get put on this model um, and get that created. But since I have a good base here as well, this might be a model that I'll be using in VR chat as well even though it's missing some of the things I really want uh, for my model but yeah whatever 
you know, I, I just didn't have the patience to try to learn Unity and deal with the, the plugins and attaching the stuff, the separate assets, finding assets that would work for the overall theme I wanted, you know, you know, so. I already know who I want to commission for my actual uh, model. I figured if I'm going to be using it, I might as well get a artist that I really, really like. Uh, but I might still go with... Uh, I, basically, I'm torn between two artists. But the one person I was looking at can I actually do the art and the rigging. So it's like an all-in-one package instead of having to... Um, do two different uh, uh, people basically okay so I need to make myself a quick note here Tom simple storage had some issue that it wasn't working the way it should based on the stuff I have watched and done with uh, that mod uh, let's see, what else did we run into issue-wise? Uh, botany pots, the infernium seeds didn't want to go in, which is fine. Um, that might take some additional testing on, um, I think that, that pretty much covers, oh, the, the quark, the corundrum crystals weren't redirecting the beacon beam. So I gotta see if maybe there's like some sort of conflict or something breaking that. Uh, we were in the miscellaneous category looking for anything that might have been overlooked. Uh, that's not necessary. But we do have some additional uh, music discs. I have no idea if we'll actually be able to get them. Uh, but th they exist. Uh, Dragon Scales will allow you to duplicate elytras. When you get an elytra you can, and you have a Dragon Scale, you can put them both in the crafting grid and then create yourself a, uh, a duplicated elytra. Food stuff is probably going to crash because I can already tell it's trying to crash. Uh, or maybe that's all there was. Yeah, that's all there was. Um, let's see. This is the key for the safe. Um, for protecting your safe. The flute is not as necessary in this, but if we were in vanilla Minecraft, the flute, you can like bind a mob or uh, a tamed mob to the flute and then use the flute to uh, bring them to you. Um, let's see. But the flute also has another thing that we'll get into in a second. Explorer's Compass lets us find specific structures we're looking for, so if you're looking for like the Stronghold or a specific Pixelmon structure, this should help you be able to find them. Um, these, the Quark also adds a way to get plus one um, on the enchantments on your tool, so if you instead of like a max Fortune 3, you can do Fortune 4. And of course these seed pouches. Um, and the trowel, the trowel is really good if you're a builder. So if you have like four different uh, stone types that you want to use in your build and you kind of want randomized placement, the trowel will do it for you. Um, and supplementaries adds bombs, but it's not really necessary. Um, and I think that covers everything. So. Here's a little flute action for you guys. Thank you. Okay, that's not how that's supposed to work. What? Oh, that's weird. I'm used to playing, like, actual music. Okay. But, uh, in other mod packs it can. In this one, it's just a useless item. So, yeah, we got, we got some, some some issues to kind of work out here um but that is just an overlook of the mods they're mostly quality of life uh mods uh in the pack that you aren't quite aware of like this sorting button that's from quark 
um, the ability to do, you know, click and drag, that's a mod as well. Um, especially in the crafty window and we're crashing again. Oh no, we're just having a lag spike. So that is uh, the things you may want to know uh, before you start build base building in Pixelmon uh, on the Raidcast server. Um, I don't know when this is going to be going live for everyone. Uh, last I spoke with Gil, we're pretty, pretty solid, I think, at this point. Um, that will probably be going live sooner than you think. Um, till next time, thank you for so much for joining me um, and watching this if you uh, didn't make it to stream. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I, I love doing this kind of stuff and I hope to kind of get in a headspace where I can do it some more. Um, so I will be seeing you guys on the next Raidcast and maybe even on the server when uh, that goes live. So thank you so much and have a nice day. Bye.